between a child that's grown up in Floridated communities or a non-Floridated community or countries. Uh, that's World Health Organization data. The World okay. Health Organization tracks tooth decay in 12-year-olds in many, many different countries. And if you look at the tooth decay today, there's practically no difference for those children whether they live in a Floridated or a non-Floridated country. Okay, is there any difference? I mean, do, do we have, are we like 3% more likely to not have uh, in tooth decay in the United States because we have fluoridated water? Well, that's a good question. The largest survey ever done in the United States was conducted in 86, 87 by the National Institute of Dental Research. And they looked at uh, 39,000 children in 84 different communities. And at the end of the day, they found practically no difference whatsoever in the tooth decay. The average difference for a child that lived all their lives in a Floridated community from a child who lived all their lives in a non-Floridated community, the average difference was 0.6. Ah! One tooth surface. One tooth surface. Now, you've got four tooth surfaces what? on the cutting teeth. Top right. Six, bottom six, okay. And, and five surfaces on the chewing uh, teeth. And overall, by the time that all the teeth had come out, you've got 128 tooth surfaces. So out of 128 tooth surfaces, a difference of 0.6 of one tooth surface, less than 1% of, of the total tooth surfaces actually saved. And even that study did not demonstrate that that finding was statistically significant. And other studies, other large studies since then, uh, especially in Australia, have found even less saving in tooth. I'll be darn. I'll be darn. Well, Dr. Paul Conant is a, a very well-respected member of the chemical community, I would say. All right, is that the right way to say that? I <laughs> mean, as a, as a professor at St. Lawrence University, as somebody who is a graduate of uh, Cambridge and of uh, Dartmouth, uh, this is not uh, fringe science he's working on in the case against fluoride. But as we were talking about earlier, Paul, I remember when I was growing up, my uh, grandmother, who I love very much, she was very exercised about uh, about fluoride in the water. But then again, she thought Dwight Eisenhower was a communist. So, I mean, it was like but that, that type of thing that would kind of get rolled together until I actually sat down and read your book. I didn't realize how right she really was, not about Dwight Eisenhower, but about fluoride. And and one of the things I never really thought about is if fluoride is a medicine that we intentionally purchase and use in uh, in toothpaste, how dare we pump it into the water as a medicine that's unethical, just even if it is good for somebody that person should make the choice on whether or not they're taking that medicine. And I couldn't think of any other thing, any other medication that we force people to take against their will. Can you? No. Uh, there was a short experiment with iodine uh, f uh, to fight um, hyper, uh, hypothyroidism back in okay. you know, lack of iodine. But they quickly stopped that because they found that uh, people were overdosing on iodine when they put it in in the water so that experiment was short-lived but since fluoridation was introduced no we have never ever used the water supply to deliver a medicine all right uh, what, about, obvious, what about obvious. what about iodized salt though what about you mentioned yeah, yeah. iodine so is, yeah. would that be a comparison yes that, that iodized salt uh, well first of all iodine is a nutrient uh, we need it. The body needs it. There is absolutely no evidence whatsoever that the body needs fluoride. Okay. None at all. There's all no right. not one single biological process in the body that requires fluoride. So to, it's quite different from the other nutrients which are added, for example, to, to food. But right. in all those other cases, there is some choice in the matter. Sure. When you I, put it in the water, there's no choice. And especially for families of low income, there's no choice. All right. So, and again, you, to, to amplify that then, iodized salt, it is a nutrient. You can choose that or mm -hmm. you can get sea salt. 
You can get natural salt. You can get kosher salt. You can get whatever you want, but there is no other spigot for water coming out of your sink that doesn't have fluoride in the water. And 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 as a medicine, um, it's in, it, this. It's unique in that. Be, then this means that a governmental body has decided you need this for your teeth, and they're going to give it to you whether you want it or not. It's not a nutrient, and it can also be a hazardous waste. Yes, that's right. That's exactly exactly right. And and unfortunately, the agency that is most involved in promoting fluoridation is the Oral Health Division of the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta. Now, the, 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 the total body, the Center for Disease Control, many thousands of, of scientists with many uh, credentials and so on, but the Oral Health Division is only 30 people, and they are largely dentally trained. There's not any toxicologist on the staff. There's very few specialized in, in forms of different forms of medicine. So you've got people whose preoccupation is teeth, 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 who are promoting this and it's making statements for which they have no credentials in terms of the, the safety. So that's a, a very unfortunate situation. The, the center of disease control in this case is like Tweedledum to Tweedledee with the ADA, the American Dental Association that promotes fluoridation. Uh, the, the CDC is like an adjunct of the ADA, preoccupied with teeth and very uh, uncredentialed when it comes to safety issues. Very interesting. All right, so again, fluoride topically applied, yes. There is plenty of evidence that says when fluoride is is brushed onto teeth, when it is absorbed through toothpaste uh, into the teeth, to the gum area, that's a positive thing. You're not disputing that. Well, some people opposed to fluoridation don't even want fluoridated toothpaste. I personally haven't used fluoridated toothpaste for 15 years. The key thing is to brush your teeth, and the key thing is to have a good diet if you want to protect your teeth. And uh, I would advocate the use of xylitol in, in toothpaste. Xylitol is a natural sugar, and it prevents the the bacteria from sticking to a to the surface of the teeth, and therefore the bacteria do not thrive in the mouth. But put that to one side. If I had to choose between adding fluoride to the water or encouraging people to use fluoridated toothpaste, that's a no-brainer. Yes, okay. brush it on your teeth, spit it out. Don't put it in the water. Okay, but there's actual, I mean, if I remember correctly from the case against fluoride, there is some evidence that says fluoride applied topically works. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's not you're not disputing that it works topically. Yeah. It's just there's absolutely zero proof. And in fact, this is where we start getting into, as you were talking about in in poor in in different economic groups for a lot of people. Putting it in the water is not only does it not help their teeth, it may degenerate other aspects of their health. Absolutely. We have 41% of American children now. This is the Center of Disease Control, and now admits this, 41% of children aged 12 to 15 have a condition called dental fluorosis. This is a damage to the enamel which can uh, discolor the enamel and uh, lead to pitting in the more severe forms. When they started, they thought that 10% of children would have dental fluorosis in its very, very mild form. But today, as I said, 41% of children aged 12 to 15 in the United States, including children in non-fluoridated areas, have dental fluorosis. So our kids are being overexposed to fluoride. You know, Ian, the, the, the fact which made me blink 15 years ago when I read that the afternoon when my wife put these papers on my table the thing which made me blink was the level of fluoride in mother's milk. Now, this is baby's first meal, right. developed over millions of years right. to be the best meal for the baby. The level of fluoride in mother's milk is extremely low. Uh, if in a non-fluoridated community, it can be as low as 0 0.004 parts per million. Now, we fluoridate at about one part per million. What this means is a, woman, a parent that bottle feeds their baby and makes up the formula with tap water is going to be giving her baby 
250 times more fluoride than a breastfed baby. 250 times more fluoride than nature intended. And I think that clearly underlines the fact that fluoride is not a nutrient, because if it was a nutrient, then clearly nature screwed up right. on baby's first meal. Uh, all right, so, but that would... That, if I'm to extrapolate what you just said there, I don't even know if I'm using that word correctly, but that the, then if a woman is drinking fluoridated water and she's breastfeeding somewhere along the line, that fluoridated water will not then show up in her breast milk. Is that wrong? It doesn't increase it very much. No, the okay. average level in a non fluoridated community is about 0.004. Uh, uh, in a fluoridated community, it goes up to about 0 0.01. So there is an increase, but there seems to be a mechanism in the body to keep fluoride away from the nursing infant. All right. What else would, and we don't know for sure, but you know, what else do you think um, an increase of fluoride in our bodies for people either in different socioeconomic groups or just in different countries, what else could fluoride be responsible for that we may not even have science for yet, but you suspect fluoride might be maybe even a contributing factor um, in, in a health issue? Yes, well, what we know from around the world in communities which have high natural levels, the so-called endemic areas for fluorosis in India and China, is that fluorosis has two components. One is dental fluorosis. That's when you see it in the beginning. You see dental fluorosis. And then as the child grows up, uh, some of those children will get skeletal fluorosis when they become adults. So it not only attacks the teeth, but it attacks the bone. And um, the teeth actually grow out of the bone. And the reason that you don't see the dental fluorosis until the secondary teeth emerge, you know, parents get the shock when the kids are eight or nine and the permanent teeth start coming out. You see the dental fluorosis, these white specks or streaks on, on the teeth. Uh, that's because the fluoride is loaded up in the bone. It accumulates in the bone, about 50%, more for kids accumulates in the bone. So 50% of all the fluoride that you take in each day from toothpaste, from water, from wherever, pesticides and so on, it concentrates in the bone, steadily increasing over your life. So the concern here is twofold. In the beginning, the first symptoms of fluoride's damage to the bone, and this has been observed in India and China, hundreds of studies, are symptoms identical to arthritis, stiffness of the joints, pains in the joints, Pains even in, in the bone. That's the first symptoms of fluoride poisoning of the bone. And then as the fluoride continues to accumulate, it makes the bones more brittle. And so a big concern is that by the time you've been exposed to 50, 60, 70 odd years of fluoridated water, then you may see an increase in hip fractures in the elderly. And the, the human studies, the epidemiological studies on that are mixed. There are some studies which have shown an increase in hip fractures. Other studies have not found this. But again, you know, we've only been fluoridated now for 60 years. So we've still got, uh, you know, in the future, we're going to have people who've lived there all the 70 years, 80 years, 90 years in, in uh, fluoridated communities. And there I think it's going to become more and more obvious that we're not just damaging the teeth of people, we're damaging the bones. But the other issue is, you know, we could see dental fluorosis, but what about what you can't see? What about the baby? Now, go, let's go back again to the bottle-fed baby. That bottle-fed baby is getting 250 times more fluoride than nature intended. What's that fluoride doing to the developing brain, the endocrine system, the thyroid gland, the pineal gland, and, and so on? And we've really never looked, in, in the Western world, in the Florida communities, countries, they really haven't done the studies. Um, but we're beginning to find these studies being done now in India and China. There have now been 24 studies, 24, which show an association between uh, moderate to high exposure to fluoride and lowered IQ in children. And that's very